yeah, here we go. <laughs> At the start, um, welcome everyone. Welcome for this second community call for the open COVID-19. Oops. Um, don't forget to uh, mute your microphone uh, if you're not speaking. And, uh, and if you want to speak, uh, raise, activate your video stream, raise your hands and, uh, and speak. So um, thank you for being here. Uh, it's really kind of like overwhelming uh, how fast this community has grown uh, since last week. Uh, so it really shows that um, the, approach, uh, the approach that we proposed uh, is, I believe, useful. Um, so Zach, who is also a co-leader of this initiative, can't be here today, um, but he'll be able to watch the, the stream anyway. We, uh, we have also Kat, who is uh, part of the coordination team. Uh, and so uh, usually if you have any question regarding also coordination, uh, you can speak to her. Um, we have many points uh, to address, uh, and you can find those points uh, in the link I've posted in the chat, that's the first message. Uh, it's a Google Doc and there are nine points. Uh, I encourage you to go there. Um, you will find also some statistics about the project. Uh, also, thank you, uh, Tito, for, for putting those there. Um, uh, I've put uh, also two maps that we've uh, generated. Uh, one, the first one is the number of people who actually viewed the uh, Open COVID-19 Initiative Global page. Uh, and we're talking about a large number of people, we're talking about 936 cities in 96 countries. So this is truly global. Uh, the second map is um, the, maybe I could share my screen so that it can be recorded too. Uh, or maybe not. You just have to go to the to the link, I guess. Uh, sorry. For um, sorry. Sorry. Um, where is the link for the maps? Is there? I, I don't see. There's the no link. chat history on Zoom. Somebody has to repost it. Yeah. Oh. Um, wait. I'm going to do that. Sorry. I didn't know Thank that you. was my history. Yeah. Yeah. I've also um, posted it in the general channel on Slack. Um, so for those of you who are in the workspace, you can access it there, or if you have um, access to the drive. Um, it'll be in the meetings folder. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Kat. So yeah, uh, please join this Google Doc. Uh, those are the different points uh, of, that we're going to discuss, and you can get access also to statistics and the maps I was talking about. And the second map is uh, specifically for the member of this initiative, and we see also that it's, it's, it's well spread. Um, and uh, even though 15 of the members didn't yet fill their location information, so, uh, so, uh, so it, could, it could actually be much broader. So um, let's get into um, the real thing. Um, so the at some at, so the first the first part is that we we have uh, updated the onboarding steps uh, on the about section uh, of the project page. Uh, so you should check it out and make sure that you have actually followed all the steps that you are actually uh, not only on the global page, but also on the stack, uh, register the mailing lists, uh, and, uh, and, and you also be, have access to the Open Lab Notebook. We are in the process of restructuring the Open Lab Notebook. We are going to uh, talk about that uh, also today. Um, but that's, that would be like the first step for you, uh, for you guys, to make sure that you, you have access to all the information of this initiative. Um, so second point, uh, one of the most major points that we're going to discuss today is so far when we started this initiative that was 10 days ago, uh, it was just a simple project on the, on the Drupal platform. Uh, and it, it grew really a lot. Now we had actually I haven't checked, uh, I don't know how many people we have uh, in the initiative right now, but probably more than 90. Um, and and that, that number means that uh, we can do way more than we expected at first. Uh, and so we have already several projects that are branching out of, out of the first one. And so uh, having just a single project doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, what we want to, to create, and that's what's also permitted uh, by the Drupal platform, is to create a program. So what is a program? I'm going to share my screen so that you understand. Uh, you're going to follow, uh, to follow me. Uh, let's see, let's share. Um, here we go. There. Um, so here I am on the 
Jogol platform on the uh, Open COVID-19 Initiative uh, Jogol page. And if you go there, you will see uh, programs. Right now, we only have one program, and we're going to use, that, use it as an example. Um, so it's, it's a program called Coimmune, and uh, it was launched last September to, uh, to address uh, the contemporary challenges of vaccination. Uh, we didn't know that COVID-19 was coming up. <laughs> and, um, and so the idea is a program is basically one thematic, like uh, COVID-19 is, if you want. Uh, it's a general page that can be also accessible to the general population that wants to have access to general information about what's going on. And then you can create specific challenges uh, under it. And why it's interesting is uh, it seems that we have many challenges to address. And if you look at the, at the um, Google Doc, uh, I, sent, uh, I sent you the link. Uh, let me find it again. Um, we have at least uh, the challenge of prevention, the challenge of diagnostics or detection, and the challenge of treatment, and also uh, the challenge of uh, healthcare points, production of kits, uh, and distribution of kits um, and, uh, or equipment. So, and those are very different kind of challenges. And so it means that uh, the type of um, sub-communities that are going to, uh, to target the challenges are not necessarily the same. Uh, and the projects are not going to be the same. So having a, a program structure enables uh, the community to branch out uh, and to, uh, to, to create uh, new projects that target specifically one challenge. Um, so if I go back to, uh, to uh, the program page. Uh, basically, you can ask to participate, uh, and then you would be uh, you would be asked to uh, to join one of the specific challenges. Here we had two uh, challenges. One is was access to vaccination. The other one vaccination hesitancy. Uh, you can go there uh, and uh, oops, and uh, then ask to participate as an individual as an individual or to submit a project. So the idea would be that you would well, someone would create a project. For example, uh, the project um, uh, that is already there uh, about making iron lungs, uh, like respir respiratory systems uh, in open source way. Uh, this is less about diagnostic than it is about uh, treatment. And so that project will go specifically in the change of treatment uh, for COVID-19. Uh, and then you can follow specific challenges, etc. So it enables to have like a more more granular, as, you know, approach to uh, to uh, to what's going on in the community. Um, so so that's basically what we want to propose you. Uh, and what I would like to do now is uh, I need to stop my share to be able to see all of you. Yeah, uh, is do you do you feel like this makes sense? Uh, and do you basically agree with this evolution of the project? Uh, you can you, you don't have to speak all of you, you know all at the same time, but uh, you can maybe put uh, like a yes or no or maybe uh, maybe not you know uh, on the chat for example uh, that would be great. Um, if someone um, wants to make a remark like a, uh, like an observed remark, uh, you can actually uh, uh, activate your microphone. Um, anyone actually wants to react about this big change? Does it make sense for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm reading the chat. Um. Hey, I'll hop in and say, yes, it makes sense for you. Uh, and as I think people that are like more on the contributor level, like great, like now we get, now we have these buckets that we can, that we can go into. I think it's something that you've obviously put a lot of thought into as a, you know, as a team organizing Jogal. Um, and thankfully, it means it's something that the rest of us don't have to think about. So we just have to find find and propose projects. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Tito. Um, all right. So um, what would be great is that we have to identify now um, challenges. Challenges we agree uh, upon that you know, what what describes like the the sub parts you know of what is COVID nineteen today. So we made some proposition uh, in the Google Doc. If you have other ideas, please uh, make a proposition directly on the Google Doc. Uh, you can comment, you have access to it. Uh, that, would be actually, that, that would be really great. And then we can make a summary uh, at the end and select uh, the best propositions. Um, so you can do that during the call. Um, and uh, the, third, uh, the third point is because we are going into uh, 
program structure uh, and that we have several challenges, it also means that we'll, we'll, we'll actually be able to welcome more projects uh, and that means we also need to have more leaders, meaning leaders here are people that are leading projects. So um, I think that we have already several leaders in this call uh, that have been expressing their motivation in leading uh, specific initiatives. Uh, I think, uh, for example, um, Ellen, you are with uh, Anika, you are, you, you are already actually making propositions to, to lead an initiative in New York to do environmental monitoring. Could you tell us, tell us a bit more about that? We, <laughs> we're kind of building the plane as we're flying it at the moment, just because that's kind of the situation everyone is in. Basically, we're just reiterating the CDC pro, um, protocols. So we're using their validated primers and their um, plasmids as the positive and negative controls. Um, we got almost all of the reagents in-house. Uh, we're going to start actually doing swab testing next week, I would say. Um, the one thing that uh, we've run into is how do you validate with actual samples of, of, of virus. I mean, even getting our hands on inactivated viral RNA to, um, to do some limit of detection tests would be really of interest to us. And I'm not even sure where to go for something like that. Um, but uh, in terms of the protocols on everything, uh, as I said, we're just following the CDC protocols. Uh, we also are going to do some testing for free of local schools. I'm trying to get in touch with the New York City um, Mayor's Office and the Department of Health, and of course it's a madhouse. I can't get through to anyone. Um, uh, we'd certainly be happy to, number one, share uh, any efforts or, or, or insights or anything that we have on um, the best way to do this, best practices. Um, any other test protocols for environmental swabbing and testing that anyone comes up with? Um, maybe, maybe Ellen, uh, we can make a call. Here. Who in this call right now is interested uh, on working on environmental monitoring? Um, could you say hi? Hi. Yeah, that's one of my primary interests. Right, so uh, Dirac, uh, maybe could you, uh, could you tell us more about uh, where you are and how you see things from your own perspectives? Sure, absolutely, yeah. So um, I started out with uh, the approach on uh, the uh, uh, CDC uh, uh, primer sets as well uh, and uh, have been uh, a little bit off put uh, by uh, the cost of uh, the uh, FAM probes for those sets. And so I've been researching uh, whether I can get by with uh, <coughs> some of the other primer sets, particularly BioBasic has uh, some very inexpensive uh, uh, runs of the Chinese primer sets. Uh, in terms of positive control, uh, I posted in the chat a molecular cloud link uh, to uh, a commercially available uh, a, a, a plasmids uh, with uh, N, uh, E, and uh, uh, the, uh, oh, whatever the other one is, uh, the RPP uh, 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 portions of the viral uh, 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 capsid, uh, which uh, can be used for positive controls. Um, was approached by Michael Crone, uh, who's at uh, Imperial University London, uh, and is doing some work on uh, armored RNA uh, positive controls for uh, 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 COVID. Uh, and uh, this is an approach that actually should uh, produce a uh, much better positive control, uh, but he's not quite ready to uh, ship those out yet. Uh, so uh, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, that gets us a better positive control within a uh, couple of weeks here. Awesome. Anyone else wants to, uh, to speak up uh, about environmental monitoring? Um, anyone interested? In, you, know, that you, you could actually totally work together here. Um, yeah. I, um, yeah, I would be really interested to do some environmental monitoring with the people from Aquarium. Um, I guess I didn't, there was one term that Derek just said, was it armored RNA? Yeah, this was a new term to me as well. Uh, and uh, so uh, until Michael uh, you told me about uh, their research, and let me post a uh, paper in the chat uh, about that. Uh, 
Um, I uh, hadn't uh, run into this approach, uh, but basically what they're doing uh, is uh, uh, forming uh, a, uh, a, a, an enclosure around the RNA to prevent it from being immediately broken down by, by enzymatic action. Uh, um, but uh, this allows it to uh, stay in the environment much as if it were uh, wrapped up in a secondary structure uh, in the actual viral capsid. Uh, mm -hmm. The problem with the uh, positive controls uh, from the plasma generated uh, is that what is uh, left uh, from the plasma uh, is just a uh, dangly strain of uh, a, 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 of a, a uncoiled, un uh, secondary tertiary structured uh, uh, material, uh, and uh, so it can break down very, very easily. Okay, sounds cool. Um, All right. Um, so, so I think that's that's it. I, sorry, oh, yeah. and I'm just, I'm interested in detection in general, um, environmental or not. I'm currently not affiliated with any lab. Um, but I mean, I guess, you know, the development of the, the essay and handling samples and making sure you have enough um, samples to make sure something's negative or positive. So I, in general, I'd be interested in, in that too. Awesome. That's great. So I think we have here the example of uh, how, like, what kind of a subgroup could be. Uh, and uh, so that would be more on the preven prevention um, side of, of the challenge. Uh, um, I think another example could be, uh, I think Tom, Tom from OpenSet, are you here? Tom? Hello? Yeah, Tom, so. Uh, Sorry, my, Tom. my earphones are not great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, think, I think Tom, it would be very insightful if you could uh, also explain what, what, you're to do. Oops, yeah. <laughs> what, what you're planning to do with OpenSet. Yeah, will do. Look, I'll, I'll just turn on uh, my my thing as you as you mentioned. Um, oh, no, that's renamed. Sorry, guys, I, I don't use the the um, uh, Zoom as often uh, as I should. Maybe so if I say allow, then can can people yeah, we can hear you. see we can hear you. or oh you okay? You can hear me and okay. Great. Well, Jesus, sorry, <laughs> put myself together. Um, so uh, we've we've just uh, myself and Thomas were talking this morning, um, and I think maybe a, a few people uh, on the call are, are aware. Um, we were uh, we're based in the UK, and we do these these kind of shipping container labs, um, and we, we've come across some some really impressive work from from OpenTrans um, just in the last couple of days um, in uh, developing a kind of potential throughput of, of ten kilo. Uh, tests per day um, using uh, a liquid handling uh, system um, and some, some re real-time qPCR um, so we, we wanted to replicate that work and and maybe I, I'm just learning how to use this here we have the open trans um, publication I'll, I'll copy that into the chat for people um, and that's really the work that we'll be um, seeking to replicate um, and uh, we'll be doing that um, physically in 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 open cell over um, uh, the next uh, the next few days and 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 with the name of, of the end of the month um, and and really if people are are interested in that there's there's a lot of missing links um, a lot of issues around um, regulatory um, uh, landscapes how, how might we use this as a, a test case um, mm -hmm. to kind of validate um, citizen science I think that's really the the question mark um, you know this could be a really positive um, kind of case study that that, that policymakers can, can use um, there's other issues around uh, just just backbones really really hardcore molecular biology um, you know what is the best protocol to run um, what would be the most affordable protocol to run is there some way we could do it that it, it could make it easier to replicate for other groups um, and then of course um, there's more on the the kind of hardware and delivery side so actually programming uh, the robots again possible remote um, and, and engagement that way but I suppose if anyone's also uh, in in London and uh, you know is is prepared to be uh, proactive and, and cautious about their own physical health and, and those around them, uh, they might pop by open cell in, in the coming uh, time uh, to participate uh, locally as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we're up to. Uh, do you want to tag on anything or any, any um, questions? I think, or? 
I, th I think I think what was interesting in your example, Tom, is that um, so you're a local lab in uh, in London, and uh, you have access to uh, to, uh, to electrical machines and to robots, and uh, and uh, and so we the idea that this lab oh, uh, don't hesitate to put yourself in mute, and there is some equal. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Thanks. Um, so the, the, the idea that a local laboratory can be used um, as, as a central uh, for doing detection uh, where um, because you have the throughput to be able to do um, like massive amount of, uh, of tests, uh, it could be for environmental testing, it could be also for uh, human testing, if you have the right environment, obviously, for doing that. Um, and uh, so I, th I think it's, 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 it's an interesting example. Um, oh. Yeah, I'm, I have the power to mute people. I'm going to mute people if I, if I hear sounds. <laughs> um, so, so uh, I think um, that so that was that was uh, another example. I don't know. Do we have um, someone from Jim Hazelhoff Laboratory uh, in in Cambridge? Um, I'm not sure if he made it to the call. Um, so just to give you uh, uh, an idea, so we uh, were also contacted by uh, academic uh, research groups uh, that are currently working either uh, around uh, virology, uh, but also sometimes like the, the lab of uh, uh, Jim Hazeloff uh, on low technology applications, you know, of biology, uh, to do, for example, diagnostics. And uh, so they've been working uh, uh, on the on diagnostic systems uh, and, uh, and uh, they have kits. And uh, so um, it's, it's very interesting how uh, we can, you know, how we help plug initiatives together. And so we can welcome uh, the project being done at Jim Hazel's lab within the initiative. And so that it can also be observed and, uh, replicated uh, and improved, you know, through this community. Um, so that was another example for me. Also, um, I think uh, I think I think that's it for examples. If you if you would like to speak up because you are yourself actually uh, wanting to um, lead a project, uh, being part of this uh, of the of these challenges, uh, please um, take. Um, the microphone and introduce yourself. Uh, you know, I've uh, got one minute. Um, or are you maybe all of here? All, all of you are here mostly to um, to understand how they can contribute, I guess. Um, but if you if you have a specific idea, don't hesitate to speak up. Uh, I'll leave you the the microphone. So the next point, yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask if everyone to talk about open lab notebook because I saw that was getting a lot of traction on Slack. But so you, you want to talk about the, op the open lab notebook? That's one of the projects, right? So maybe somebody could talk about. Oh um, yeah, uh, we're going to talk about it in the in the point um, seven, actually. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so I think Matt, you wanted to uh, to speak up. Yeah, maybe you should make sure um, we're talking about what the kind of lead positions would be or how we're going to organize ourselves. Is that right? Okay, so I was I was wondering if um, I saw a lot of software engineers, um, uh, but I haven't really seen where we fit into the picture. Um, but there are a lot of us here. Um, so for me, I'm just a front end, you know, web developer. Um, I wouldn't know anything about the science, but I'm here and I want to help. So maybe there's some other people like that. And where do we fit in? Totally. What's going to tell us? So uh, there are probably applications um, of, you know, of, of, of code uh, and digital technologies, for example, maybe on prevention, uh, like apps that can help people understand what to do. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, I could probably see also an opportunity to, um, to improve uh, the current infrastructure. That is uh, that is Jogo, for example. If that's something Jogo. that is interesting to you, uh, the whole source, uh, the whole source code is open source, uh, and so we welcome contributors on that part. Um, so if you're interested, uh, contact us, and uh, and then we can really define what are the 
the needs of this community, what, what we can improve, you know, to make the work of this community better. Uh, that's definitely something we could do together. Um, so that would be you then? Is that who you're talking about? Yeah, mostly me and, uh, and also Luca, who is one of our developers. He's, he's also on the call, but he's silent. Luca. Luca is a developer. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I'll reach out to yeah. Luca and you. Yeah, if I could chime in really quick. Um, sorry for the lawnmower. Someone's mowing their lawn. Um, there, there are quite a few um, software developers and other engineers who aren't um, really part of the biology side. So one of the things that um, hopefully we'll be able to get going with the program structure is um, create some more projects that are sort of steering away from um, some of the really technical biology stuff to um, involve everyone. Um, there's been a few ideas floating around about um, just like analyzing the data or the trends of the different cases that are popping up, creating some sort of app or website or something where people can go to to um, see trends and whatnot. So that might be a possible project. Um, hopefully we can start inviting some of um, the fellow software engineers and developers to um, start something that we don't currently have. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that sounds yes. awesome. Um, there's a ton of software developers, so we just need some organization. All right. Is it on GitHub? It's uh, we're on GitLab. Okay, GitLab. Uh, you, you probably can. Luca, can you put the link to the GitLab of uh, of Drogo in the chat? Yeah, <coughs> I, I awesome. did right now. Okay, perfect. Um, I think Adeline, you wanted to speak. Hi. Can I, can I just add, can, yeah. Can I just add something to? I think like whether or not you are someone with a molecular biology background and whether or not that's what you want to learn. I, f I feel like this is a really good opportunity for people to understand like what, you know, what is, what kind of test, you know, like not, not to get into the technical details, but you know, what is the false positive, negative, you know, in, if we test for diseases at the zoo, you know, we, we might do things like multiple times before we go and tell someone that, you know, this animal is positive. So I was hoping that this is also a chance, like whether or not is this virus or any, you know, future, um, you know, epidemic that people can understand some of what it needs to be done and how things are handled, um, something like that. Like, just a very simple thing so people can understand a little bit more about what, what diagnostics, you know, really means when, when people give you a result. Um, yeah. Thanks. Does anyone have any um, data visualization skills or infographic skills? That probably would be really good. Yeah, good point. I guess this There's is somebody the other day on Slack that said they were a graphic designer. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a recorded video, so maybe it will, will be seen by someone with these skills. Um, um, yes, I have, um, this is Brendan in Seattle. I have um, graphic design skills, but less on the um, web design skills, more on the, you know, I guess you could call them old timey uh, graphic design side. Awesome. Thank you, Brendan. Um, um, my name is Victoria, and I'm in New York City. I'm the co-founder of Cool Anthropology. We do infographics and have a few interns at the moment as well. So I can send you a message. Awesome. I, I, think, I think that uh, if anyone has seen some of the really great infographics that have popped up, um, I mean, even just simple ones like the, um, the graphs showing the difference between uh, what would happen with acute cases and if if the if the number of cases were slowed down, and then there's a dotted line to show the capacity of the healthcare system, so that if you have it overwhelmed, if if people don't follow the the suggestions to avoid community spread, what you're going to get is um, a large surge in cases rather than a, it, the cases will be inevitable, but if they can be kept down. To a level where it doesn't overwhelm the healthcare system and it's kind of this rolling thing that that would make a huge difference and that that graphic was really simple then there was one that showed just the transmission from the one lawyer in westchester county to show how quickly uh, one person can affect hundreds around them and seeing it in a graphic form <laughs> is much more terrifying than I, I, I mean, literally, we know a picture is worth a thousand words, but people who can convey that through graphics are worth their weight in gold. Very good point. 
um, so so I, I guess I guess um, uh, we probably could imagine um, having all those um, like graphic designs uh, and work uh, under the prevention uh, challenge. Like, how do we actually make sure people are aware of the risk? Um, um, this is awesome. Um, thank you, Victoria. Um, I guess let's let's go let's go to the next point. Uh, and the next point is also very important. Uh, and it's uh, is that the creation of meta teams or like boards, if you want. Uh, and and we have like one very specific need for this community and this initiative is to make sure that uh, everything we do or that or the actions that we invite people to do that they don't harm themselves doing this uh, and that they know they're aware of all the potential risk and so the framework for biosafety and biosecurity should be absolutely obvious and well framed um, and so uh, it's uh, the idea that we propose is the creation of a biosafety and biosecurity board uh, that would be able to be reached uh, out, you know, like you'd be able to, uh, you as a community member, reach out to them to ask them questions, but also they'll be reviewing uh, the projects so that they make sure that the projects are going in the right direction and they can, uh, um, like, uh, advise them about uh, what they should do, what they should transform. Uh, and so the idea is to, uh, to make proposition of names and make also proposition of, of mode of actions that you feel uh, are fitting this kind of board um so um does that make sense to you uh would, would you do this like would you use this time approach or would you use a different approach um but that's basically like the first question i think it cuts Hello? I'm back, sorry. The Wi-Fi just cut. This is crazy. So what you said was cut off, so if you wanted to... Yeah, I don't know why... The, the connection, my connection is being very unstable. So let's let's cross fingers. Um, so what what I was saying is, um, um, what did you hear? Like, did you hear um, like the story about the board for biosafety and biosecurity, or what, what did it start? Yeah, that's that's it. Basically, cut off right as you started introducing. Well, you got like halfway through the introduction of what the purpose of the board was, but not the call okay. to action. Okay, okay. Um, so um, basically, uh, the why we are proposing the creation of the biosafety and biosecurity board is that it's the the core uh, need of this community and this initiative is to make sure that um, um, projects are well framed. Uh, make sure that. Uh, people that are joining this community are also not given tasks or actions to perform uh, that could harm them. Uh, so we need to have the project being reviewed by this kind of board uh, with this kind of, of, of skills and experience. And also to have a board that can be reached by you, uh, community members, uh, uh, so that if you have a question, uh, even naive, a naive one, that you can ask uh, that question to them and have, a, have an answer. So um, it's uh, so my question. My question was then: Does that make sense to you? Would you use this kind of approach, or do you have another approach in mind for uh, trying to answer that need? I think it's critical because it also um, reassures people. I know that um, during the um, Synbio Beta Town Hall call there was a question that was asked about citizen involvement. And basically we were told that the only thing we were good for was to spread information and that we shouldn't, that this was um, um, Megan, um, I don't know why I'm blanking on her last name, the, the, the woman from Stanford who's oh, a bias. Yeah. And, um, 
basically, I think that there's a fear that amateurs will get involved and hurt themselves and others. So I think it's critical that we have a board that has um, some credentials, unfortunately, uh, to allay the fears and to show people that we're serious. Yeah. Um, does anyone else wants to react uh, and, uh, and we'll make a, a counter proposition? Uh, hi, this is uh, Chris Monaco here. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Cool. Um, I mean, it's a bit noisy. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Somebody just walked through in the very loud. Um, I kind of just echo what Ellen said. I know for me personally, but when I first heard about this project, I sort of debated whether or not I wanted to join on because of kind of some biosafety concerns about it. I wasn't sure what the plan was and how serious people would take it, but I thought, oh, what the hell, I'll give it a shot. Uh, but I'm really excited to see that there are people that are genuinely concerned about the biosafety aspect. Um, I'd be interested in being a part of that um, and hope maybe reaching out to some colleagues. I'm over at CDC, so reaching out to some colleagues and see if there's other people that would be interested in also just at least providing expertise, willing to review documents or protocols or things of that nature um, with people who are experts in that field. So um, that's so awesome. Thank I think you. It's a good idea, and I'd, I'd be happy to help with that. Yeah. So, um, so if if it makes sense to you, uh, could you could you uh, put uh, like names that your name, your own name, uh, below uh, the item in the Google Doc so that we can start drafting um, like a, a proposal for such a board. Uh, yeah. That would be great. That would be great. Thank you so much. Um, um, so, so that's that's pretty much done. So that's that's fantastic. Uh, another thing is um, is what what we call here facilitators. Uh, and and what what uh, I mean by here by this is this is this is a growing community, and and it will become more and more complex, and uh, and 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 we have probably more and more projects that are branching out. Uh, and for example, we'll be talking at the at the later stage of this um, of this call about, for example, IGEM teams. And uh, so there is there is the key um, thing to take care of here is making sure that projects and people are, uh, stay connected. Uh, and and so that uh, when you see something happen uh, in one project that will make sense for another one, that to make to somehow make sure that this other project hear about it. Um, and so. What would be great if uh, if you're interested in playing that extra role, it's a bit like kind of like an extra responsibility if you want, but that would improve so much the quality of this community and its output. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and uh, the same the same as for the, the biosafety and biosecurity board. If you feel like uh, you'd be the a good person for doing this, uh, you welcome uh, your 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 role will be really appreciated. Uh, you can put your name below it, and uh, that would be great. Um, and, um, and, but again, like, would that make sense to you or would you have, um, another approach to this kind of problem? Uh, I'm really curious also to hear about what you, uh, you want to, you could propose. So I'll quickly chime in a little bit on this. Um, I'm not sure if it's really necessary, um, so to speak, to have, quote unquote, dedicated people to facilitate um, cross project collaboration. I think one of the things that we can um, probably establish is either through Slack or Google Drive or something, have a sort of shared space for um, cross challenge discussions um, and also like the sharing of information. I'm not really sure there really needs to be a specific person who gets that going. I think that's something that will happen naturally. I think that we can encourage people to do that because obviously there's a lot of overlap in the science and whatnot um but yeah that's actually my general take on the idea of having facilitators i think it's a little bit more important to find the people who are um more interested in sort of managing or overseeing the challenges and also sub projects so finding the people who have a specific passion for either the challenge or you know specific yeah. Um, sort of sub focuses to start to corral efforts and sort of put out tasks and um, needs um, 
to quickly go back to talking a little bit about the program and why we're shifting to that is that it'll be easier, hopefully in theory, um, to provide a list of ongoing tasks or needs um, for each project. So it's a little bit easier for people to find um, what to do. I know this has been a problem for a lot of like the software engineers or um, graphic designers who are currently in a state where they wanna help but they don't know where to help. Um, so hopefully if we're able to have these sub projects and challenges, we're able to make it more clear to everyone here um, where they can chip in and where um, they're needed or where they can contribute their expertise. Good point. Um, um, so I, I, I think I, I joined you, Kat, in saying that it would be more interesting to have um, people uh, more focused on challenges themselves than, um, than facilitating that gen general facilitation. Um, what, what are your take? Uh, do you want to react um, on this? What's, what? Do you think it's a good idea do you, or do you have a different idea maybe? Yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm Ruri, I'm, I'm in Spain. Um, one, one concern that I would have is, is that the facilitators wouldn't be meeting every day, maybe once a week, kind of like an end of, end of a, what I would call a sprint, a, a five day period. So then we can get together and kind of set a status where everyone is and, and what pace they're at, what problems they're having. Um, that, that would work best for me, but I'm, I'm a software developer, so that's the kind of thing that we, we normally do. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to be a facilitator on, on some of the software projects. Um, what, one thing that I'd also like to add is, is I came here through the open source ventilator project, um, and I got a little bit mixed up between what is this project versus what is the open source ventilator project. So I'm here, it is interesting, and um, certainly I'm gonna help out. For, for me, from a, a greedy perspective, from the, the ventilator perspective, um, what would be really useful for us is, is the, the body that is, is telling us, yes, these are valid people, because as, as a lay person to get in the door with, with either doctors or hospitals, we need some rubber stamp to say we're, we're not just novices banging our head trying to, to waste doctors' time. Um, that's, that's me from a, a greedy perspective. The, the, the board would be a big win for, for, for us if we could do that. Awesome, thank, thank you for, for your intake. Um, anyone else would like to, uh, to, to bring in uh, a comment? Yes? Me on yet? Yes. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Margarita Pivere. I am an artist working in the, uh, with yeah, biological arts. And I live in Berlin. I do my PhD in Helsinki. I, I, I think I don't have the technical skills I can help. Um, in, uh, very willing to to follow the developments and to support it as much as I can, but maybe um, if it is of any help, I can share with you what I've seen uh, in Italy because I come originally from Italy, and um, I my family is in lockdown, my friends are in lockdown, so maybe this real life experience of the layman, as uh, Larry just mentioned. Maybe, maybe of some help of gaining a comprehensive view on the events. Also because what has been happening in Italy is happening in Germany right, right now. And I could see both sides. The first time, I, the, first moment, the first day I saw my, uh, there was the first person dead in the in the region or the, in the area where my parents live, live. I told them, okay, now you stay put. It's just stay in lockdown. They're over 70, so theoretically vulnerable. And I could foresee everything that came. So I don't know if that is of any interest. I'm happy to share this maybe later at a later point. So I leave space now for others to um, tell how they can con con Thank you, Margarita. Yeah. Should, Should I, I do it now? Does anyone 
Margarita, could could you put maybe on Google Docs or somewhere where your your visualizations are are used and what it looks like? Because we could use it as as, as kind of a marketing yeah experience to to get people. Um, um, it's scary. It's really <laughs> scary. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> no, but I will put it on the Google Doc because it's important to see. I mean, what I think because I see the events from the perspective of Europe, which is a federation of states, but still anyone, every state is different. Italy as is a centralized uh, country, Germany is a federal country. So what they can implement in terms of countermeasures are very different because in Italy, the government can say, okay, now all schools are closed or um, big events are closed. In Germany, there is a historical reason for that was made to prevent another Nazi rise after World War II. But they can't do it because the central government doesn't have the possibility to do it. So also um, aligning everyone on the same page is not as easy as it is in a centralized state as in Italy. They are both, they are both uh, big countries because the population is above 60 million. And if you compare the population, these are my observations. Uh, but if you compare the outbreak and the and the curve with the with the data on the population density, you will see that the most densely populated areas are those that made the peak. And this is, is uh, the no region of northern Italy and now the regions that are hit in Germany. The death rate is different, but the um, Health uh, Institute in Germany says it's probably because the, so far the virus has spread across different cohort of population with a slightly younger target, so tendentially sturdier against current infections. So, um, so I think uh, thank you again, for, um, you know, Margarita, for 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 sharing all this. Uh, I think it would be great if you maybe could uh, share this on the Slack directly, uh, uh, as it will be actually registered directly also uh, for the for the for the group. Uh, I'm do, I'm just looking at the at the time and uh, we sure. Have, yeah. That's why I asked. Yeah. On the Slack, you said. Yeah, if possible. Uh, Can if, you please? Um, it, it, if, if, yeah, we can put the, the maybe Kat, you can put the, the link to the Slack, to join the Slack. I'll type in my notes in the meanwhile. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we have, we have uh, four more points to, uh, to, uh, to see. Um, the next one is about the press. Uh, so uh, you probably uh, saw it, and it, it's maybe also maybe a reason why you're here. But uh, we've received a lot of we we've, we have received a lot of press uh, in the last week, and that has put some pressure uh, also on this community, and uh, there has been some concerns that were actually uh, shout out, um, and that is totally understandable. And so um, the point is that. Um, it's everything has been uh, very fast and uh, on one side on one hand one goal was to uh, make sure that this initiative was heard and that we could gain participants like contributors and i think that has played pretty well uh, on the other hand uh, uh, we've seen journalists reaching out to uh, to committee members and uh, and uh, and that without mm -hmm. without warning and that was not uh, necessarily very nice um, so the idea is to discuss about uh, what, would, what would be like a good strategy uh, for this uh, initiative to deal with uh, the press. And one is to craft a universal response uh, that we could share. And you could share if you contacted yourself by the press so that we are also aligned. Uh, obviously, you can always speak about your own motivation. Um, and uh, and then also, uh, if you if you want to share your own uh, experience, uh, you know, with uh, with how it's been, maybe you you, you want uh, to uh, to share some concerns too, and uh, and so you know that would be the moment to do it. Yeah, so I'm going to quickly tag on to that. So we have a um, communications channel on Slack. Um, some of the names of these channels will change. Will talking about that in a bit but um i know a lot of you have experience or on the surveys have mentioned you have experience working with the press or 
um, dealing with communications or um, public facing sort of information. Um, and if that's something that's of interest to you, or if you're already um, being contacted by different members of the press, I would um, encourage you to join that channel. And we'll be working on, like Tomas said, working on some sort of universal response or deciding if that's um, what we want to do um, post call for the sake of just getting through some of these um, points on the agenda. The thing maybe it'd be you? worth, um, sorry, just real quick. Maybe it'd be worth uh, having some sort of, or designating a group of people or just a few individuals as spokespeople. And then we can just direct press any inquiries we get to those individuals who can speak for the larger community rather than, you know, making sure that everybody's always on the same page with their messaging, which might be hard if, you know, yeah, yeah, I, I like think, people. yeah, I think that's a um, fair point. I think, I think this is also just a discussion for another time. And I think um, what we'll probably possibly end up doing is like you said, having a spokesperson or sort of a spokes group for general press requests that are interested in the initiatives of a whole. Um, but there are some like specific individuals who have been contacted um, and they have asked more about like their personal experience, their personal sort of background and whatnot. So um, there's different layers to how we can tackle this, but um, I think those are some interesting points you brought. Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll advance on that and we'll probably create a, a channel specifically on Slack uh, about, this, uh, about this question. Um, the next point is uh, what I call science of science studies of open uh, COVID-19. What does it mean? Uh, basically, we're doing something that is quite unprecedented and um, it's, it needs to be some host study. Like we need to make a meta study of open COVID-19 uh, initiative uh, about how this whole collaboration is going. Um, uh, it could it could really be interesting to uh, other organizations and communities out there to learn about what we're doing here. Uh, and so, if you know about um, people that would be interested also in studying us <laughs> uh, as a committee, uh, please also reach out. Uh, it could be either you or someone you know. Uh, but I think it's quite a unique uh, opportunity uh, and. Uh, uh, Mark, Mark Francolini, who is, uh, um, excuse me, I'm going to, I'm going to mute uh, people up. Um, Mark Santolini, who is also a co-founder of Drogo, he's a researcher at the CRI and uh, he's also doing science of science studies and he will be also contributing uh, to, uh, to the study. But the idea is to have like also potential like many angles. So that's, that's like one, one aspect and uh, I, want, I wanted to, you to, uh, to have a think about that, a uh, thought about that. The next point is um, the, the Google Drive and, uh, and basically also the, 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 the open lab notebook structure in, 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 some, in some way. So I think Kat is the best person. She's been the one working the most on this and so we, could, we can really thank her. But Kat, could, would, would you like to present uh, how you have changed things? Yeah, so um, basically, one of the biggest things that we'll be changing about the drive is that now we'll have different, um, I guess you can call them levels. So you have, we'll need a space to keep information and research and data about individual projects, then about the challenges and then the program as a whole. So basically it becomes this multi-layered drive. And basically um, what we currently have is a good example of how a project could organize their drive, um, but unfortunately it won't be able to maintain such a large group and also such a large um, number of focuses um, since a lot of people are interested in starting their own projects. Um, but primarily, we're still working on um, the structure and hopefully we'll be able to push this out soon. Um, but the main thing is that we wanna make sure that people are able to um, cross collaborate across projects and across challenges um, and also, but making sure that it's all organized and easily um, read by anyone who comes across the project. So I think for the sake of time, I won't go into the details, but basically it'll be really similar to how the current drive is structured, um, but it'll be um, bigger. Um, on a completely separate note, for those of you who don't have access to the current drive or the doc, um, the links to request the access are above. 
and we'll be having a similar sort of request access setup um, for the new folders and whatnot. Um, and if there's anyone who like has um, concerns or comments or ideas about um, things we should be including and how the drive is structured, um, please reach out to me on Slack and uh, love to get that going. Um, and I think this smoothly transitions into um, talking about Slack. Um, so as, as you can see, for those of you who are in the Slack right now, um, and also forecasting in the future of how this project is growing and how, or this program is growing and having many different focuses is that um, it's going to get really messy really quickly and it's already starting to reach that point. Um, so I'm also currently working on a system to simply just rename some of the channels and also have a naming convention for new channels. So it'll be really easy for people to go through the list of channels and find what exactly they're looking for. Um, one of the things that I would like to sort of put out into this call right now is to try to not, I don't want to say clog up, but try not to put a bunch of stuff into the general channel. Um, right now we have a great um, channel. Again, names might change, but I think it's called the publicly announced channel. Uh, that's a good place for those of you who have like interesting articles or stories that you want to share. Um, and I think it's a, I think we'll probably be shifting the general channel to be more of a all team, all program announcements thing. Um, but it'd be great if for now we can sort of slow down the creation of um, channels and hopefully in like the next few days we can roll out a s system that works um, for everyone. Um, one thing to mention is that we're not creating um, a separate workspace for each of the challenges. We're deciding to stick with um, one whole program workspace. And one of the major factors behind this is, one, it's easier to collaborate and, and work across projects and um, challenges, but also going back to the science of science studies. So there's a lot of um, data that can be collected on the communications or usage of Slack. Um, and so that will be a really great contributor to that. Yeah. Um, and again, if you guys, if any of you guys watching or in the call right now have um, thoughts or concerns about organization of like the drive or Slack, um, yeah, I'd be the person <laughs> to reach out for that. Yeah, it's a huge amount of work. Thank you so much, Kat. Do you have like remarks, uh, feedbacks, or maybe motivations to, uh, to help out on this aspect? Open, open documentation is a very big thing. Yeah, and just to tack on, I think um, one of the things that's really important about this whole program as a whole is that it's hopefully setting up the basis for doing um, large scale scientific collaborations in the future. So we're, it's like Ellen said earlier, we're sort of building this plane as we fly it. Um, and so hopefully by developing some of these structures or systems, um, it'll sort of provide a template, so to speak, for um, other projects or ideas. Uh, good question, Kat. Is there a document somewhere that explains sort of all of the proposed structure in detail? I'm seeing this uh, image on the Open Lab Notebook Slack, and then uh, some document called Mock Open COVID-19 Main Doc. Are, are there any other uh, relevant documents to look at if someone wants to understand how the proposed structure would work in detail? Yeah, so um those those two things were posted <laughs> it's funny how this has changed over the span of two days but those are posted in response to or in regards to organizing it on a project level when we were just a project um, i've been working on some stuff on the program level that i'll hopefully put into um, that channel for people to to comment on yeah. okay cool sounds good great um i guess we're uh getting close to the end of this course. So we have one last point uh, is about um, collaboration with uh, uh, external entities. And um, so we, we've already had the example of, um, of uh, an Anika uh, Bioscience uh, with Ellen. Uh, and uh, so that is great to, uh, to have you on board. We, we have talked about Open Trans. Uh, I think, uh, uh, I think um, Christine is here, right? Uh, hi. I'm hi. Hi, Christine. Um, to, uh, 
yeah, sh shout out to uh, to OpenTron for for this beautiful work. Um, I know that Christine, you uh, you uh, you just actually been promoted, you know, to an entrepreneur uh, status, uh, and you 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 uh, you left uh, OpenTron, but uh, you've been doing all the community um, animation and mobilization around OpenTron, and it's been uh, it's been quite fantastic. So, um, maybe, um, I think. Uh, the, the the main point here is to talk more like about IGM teams, for example. We know that IGM season is starting, and um, for those that don't know IGM, IGM is a student competition that usually gives students about six months to develop a synthetic biology projects uh, and to make it real in uh, laboratory conditions uh, and share their results and conclusion in front of, uh, of a jury and get and get um, reviewed for that and get promoted and have prices. It's a fantastic community. It's the largest community of, um, let's say, young talent in synthetic biology in the world. We're talking about 7,000 uh, students. Uh, every year participating in uh, more than 50 countries. And so uh, we can expect IGM teams to focus on the coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic. So uh, the point is, um, how, do, how do we make sure that uh, IGM teams can feel welcome and so could con contribute to this global initiative also? Um, and uh, so I will be updating you with this as I'm also part of the IGM Foundation, and uh, I'm already discussing this with, uh, with them, but at the end, it's up to the IGM teams. So that's why the, having the program structure is very useful here as um, an IGM team will be able to bring in their own projects under one of the challenges, for example. Uh, another way for them to participate is through what they, they call human practices. Uh, and say it's usually they work with uh, local communities, uh, the general public or community labs. Uh, and uh, it's, it's like almost a mandatory time they have to take uh, in the project. So you can imagine that this time could be spent also on helping the existing project within the initiative. That's, that's, uh, that's a very important target uh, as, uh, for, for this community. Uh, for, for, for creating a collaboration. Um, otherwise, uh, is we're being reached out also by, by companies. So we, last week, we, uh, we heard about uh, Ginkgo Bioworks, uh, this week about uh, Anika, uh, and, and I'm sure that there, there will be many more. Uh, and, so, uh, and so if you're yourself part of a, of a company, you want to help out, you're, you're welcome. Uh, you're welcome to either propose your own project or actually uh, just uh, replicate an existing project maybe locally, um, that would be fantastic. Um, another point is about, and it's kind of like related to collaboration, it could be almost a tense point, and the last point is we're seeing um, the apparition, the emergence of a um, funding opportunity. And I think uh, it's maybe actually too, a bit late now that we're arriving at, at the end of this call, but, um, and it's a bit too soon maybe to talk about that, but uh, I think it would be fantastic to figure out a way, and we can discuss that in the, in the Slack, a way to be able to fund the projects uh, that are going to be done uh, inside this initiative in some way. Uh, so we've, we've already started taking some initiative, uh, contacting some foundations to see if they would be interested in supporting this initiative so that we could provide uh, lo local teams, you know, with uh, with resources when they are they're lacking, for example. So that's 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 one thing. Um, uh, I guess, like, um, do you, would you like to react about this subject? Um, um, so I know someone has made the proposition of organizing a crowdfunding. Uh, I, I think it's a bit uh, a bit too soon, but again, again, uh, I may be wrong, and I would love actually to hear uh, your perspectives on this. Yeah, I guess I'll um, chime in a little bit about this. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, I think someone created a nice list of the current Slack channels um, we have. But we, we have a Slack channel and a brainstorming doc in, of possible um, grants or challenges we can apply to as a um, greater program um, for funding. Um, and also there's been some um, responses in the all team survey of people who are um, concerned about the access of resources or not having the funding um, to do the um, research or the contributions that they want to do for the program. Um, on the topic of a crowdfunding campaign, 
I think that might be something for us to do in the future. Um, but as of right now, as we're still currently trying to figure out, you know, what our program looks like, um, I think it would be best to try to stay away from crowdfunding at the time, um, time being until we have sort of a more cohesive story or front to put out there. Because um, it goes back to a lot of concerns that people had about trying not to um, instill fear about COVID-19 with our project um, and other concerns about safety and um, just the general lookings of this sort of collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's my, my initial take on it. But I think that, um, I do think it's something that we should um, branch out into um, for the future. Um, to be completely honest, I don't know how much uh, substantial funding we would be able to grade um, or get from crowdfunding, but I think it's an excellent opportunity to spread awareness about our project if it if it does anything at all. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Th thank you, Kat. Um, I think I think uh, to 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 stay uh, on the collaboration aspect, we have um, uh, Jalil here uh, from Open Source Pharma Foundation. Uh, Jali, would you like to uh, to present yourself and in, in OSP OSP fund? Yeah. Um, good evening to all. I am from India. I'm Jalil, Open Source Pharma Foundation. Already, we are in collaboration with the Cree. And uh, about me, I'm I'm connected with uh, more than six hundred researchers. Actually, it is the continuation of open source drug discovery. Uh, we were doing the crowdsource projects for tuberculosis for government of India from 2008 to 2015. Then we moved to another program known as Open Source Pharma Foundation. We are more focusing on the tuberculosis, crowdsource-based uh, uh, tuberculosis aspects. What, uh, how I can support to this group? Uh, I can, uh, I can talk about uh, how our groups are um, uh, more. Um, how can we contribute to that? One, uh, we are uh, good in doing the artificial intelligence, machine learning, and computational chemistry aspects of the problem, just like um, the discovery part of the molecules, and also uh, analyzing the data by using the artificial neural network and self-organizing maps. And also we are good in uh, doing the statistical aspects and uh, of the things and we have a very good team of uh, different different students and we used to connect with the students like like this that is uh, in the zoom every week and we are updating everything in the google doc and stack and uh, we are doing the same thing for the tuberculosis so i think i can expand uh, the idea of tuberculosis to covid and support i already spoke to many of our students one of the projects which we are interested to do, whether it is fitting to this project or not, I don't know. We want to, because WHO was speaking about um, um, content and what is the experience of the patients or the people who are in the containment? Can we make a narrative out of it? so that it can be a collective intelligence program for the open science thing. If, uh, if that is fitting to our project, I can lead it with the help of some people who are already from Italy or from China or from those countries or from Iran, those who are uh, more, con containment is more there. So we are happy to tell you that, see, this project will be a great project and we can support you. And one more thing, if we can make a Facebook group or WhatsApp group, we are not uh, have, if we don't have any political problem with that groups, then we can communicate each other and we will be supporting, our students will be supporting, our researchers will be supporting for this project. Any questions so that I can answer? Well, thank you so much, Jali. It's, it's uh, very, um, very enthusiastic. Um, and uh, we would love to have you on board. Uh, you've been pioneers uh in uh, you know in uh, what you did in india around tuberculosis and uh, your experience is going to be invaluable to uh, this initiative so yeah I'm, yeah I'm looking very much forward to this collaboration uh, would you like to react uh, to what jali just said 
there are three projects which I can speak about. One is about computational chemistry aspect, just like open source research for molecules. Already Indivir is, uh, I think uh, some companies, some Chinese companies are using some HIV molecule for the treatment. And second thing is uh, collective intelligence by, you, by collecting the narratives from the containment area, patients and non-patient group. Awesome. Very awesome. Um, anyone wants and to? For, yeah. For yes, that, we, we can make a WhatsApp group or Facebook group so that we can we can uh, interact each other in a more yeah. more 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 rapid fashion. Yeah. Do Do you use Slack, Jalil? Yeah, yeah. I mean so, that I will I'll I'll join in that. Okay. Yesterday I couldn't join it. Yes, I Let's let's start from Slack and then uh, okay. let's let's okay. chat about how we want to organize this. But it's a okay. beautiful proposition. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, we're we're actually going over uh, the time we had, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, reserved uh, originally. So um, I don't want to uh, to keep you uh, too long. Uh, I think it's been uh, very full uh, full of content call, uh, and uh, I thank you. Uh, all of you, uh, thank you for actually keeping us, uh, keeping up with uh, with uh, with everything. This is very, very, very exciting, uh, and uh, this is just the beginning. We have so much to do, but uh, one thing for sure, it's it's needed, uh, and uh, you're just the proof that uh, we're probably on the good path, and uh, we need uh, we need all of you. So. Um, the rest of the, of the discussion will happen on Slack uh, and on, on Drogo. We'll, we'll uh, keep you updated with, with how we transform the project into a program uh, through Slack. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to hear about all about your feedbacks and, uh, and, and ideas. But before we go, uh, we now have a little tradition. And so I would ask all of you to activate your video stream and uh, I, will, I will do like a a nice uh, screen capture um, of all of you so that we can share this with, uh, with the social medias. Would you like to do that? Yes, and also share to us. Perfect, let's do it. I'm waiting for all of you to activate your... Yes. Yes. Beautiful. And yeah, uh, please uh, share some sentences with this photo so that I can share to our complete social media around 50,000 people. Awesome. All right. Some sentences should be there. All right. I think we almost have everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, so now you can, what we can do is just say hi. hi. <laughs> say hi to the world. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, thank you again. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing all on Slack and continuing this beautiful work. Um, you're all awesome. Thank you so much again. Yeah, I'm going to um, quickly put it out there. Um, so on the about section of the Joggle page um, and also on that main lab notebook, there's instructions on how to join the Slack and how to get edit access to the uh, um, Google Drive. So I'd recommend, yeah. And also, um, we have an all team survey. So we've gotten a lot of new members since um, the first call. Um, and we have a survey to gather more information about everyone and what their expertise is, interests, stuff like that. So um, it'd be great if you could all um, fill that out. Yeah. Thank awesome. You. Okay. Bye bye, everyone. Have a good evening or good day or good morning. I don't know where you are. <laughs> yeah, good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye.